long haul Larry and we are in the ADL shop we've got a nice fine morning going on and um, we are working on another truck so we got 800 pulled in here and I have a list of things to check out um, first of all installed scale so he wants a right way scale installed in here and I know uh, I've had the drivers and some of your subscribers know this too because you've seen like John's videos and stuff these trucks have built-in scales um, they're in the dash and everything it doesn't give like the weight or nothing it gives like a PSI value and people are all confused by it I guess nobody's really using it so he wants it simplified he wants these right way scales installed in them that's why he's doing that um, Let's see, coolant leak. Uh, driver thinks that's coming from the APU, and I looked over there, and yes, there is some uh, antifreeze inside the APU, so I'll have to tear that apart and look into that. Uh, check engine code. Driver says brakes not applying right, and they feel squishy. Um, I'm not sure what that is. Um, you know, these Volvos are different. They're not like a Kenworth or a Freightliner, and this guy came out of a Freightliner here, and he's been driving this one now. Um, they are quite different. I'm not really sure what that means. I mean, we have sensors on the wheels, you know, that if, when this happened, because I guess the driver said that he applied the brakes or something and it went down and it wasn't stopping, so he applied it more. I don't know, was it raining at the time? Did the sensor, you know, did the wheels get, slide a little bit? Did he, and then it releases the wheels, you know, I don't know. Could have been a trailer because some of the trailers had some pretty bad brakes. I've been going through them. Did he have one of those trailers that had bad brakes? Um, there is a trailer that uh, S cams. The the boss just had a, the brakes done on one of the trailers at a shop, and I actually checked over the trailer, and I mean the S cam. You could move that thing a half an inch in each direction. I mean, so that that that's it wouldn't even pass the DOT inspection, and it's got brand new brake pads on it. <clears throat> I I don't know. Uh, I, I tried them, and it seems to stop just fine, but these brakes on these Volvos, you press them down, and it's not like a railroad submarine where it goes down only so far and that's it, you know, and the brakes lock up. These things, you go down, the brakes apply and everything, but then you can actually press them all the way, and it's like mush down. It's the way all, the, all these Volvos are, so I'm not really sure on that. I'll do an inspection on the brakes and see if I can find anything wrong, but I'm not really positive on that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, new batteries made possibility. Um, I actually have the cover off over there and I'm looking at them and it looks like maybe one battery's been leaking acid and another one looks swelled up. So I have checked them and it says check pack. So I'm going to be tearing the batteries apart and checking them all individually. Um, driver says right side hub oil leaking. Okay, I've already talked to this driver about this. I don't know if he doesn't believe me or what the deal is here but I don't know if you can see it or not but the oil level is right at the bottom of this rubber plug now this is overfilled and he has the covers off on him so I think that he's paying very close attention to it and I think he's actually been putting oil in him this line right here that is on here this is the oil level when you look at semi hubs they have a line. Sometimes they might have two of them and it can be anywhere in between those. These hubs do not take a lot of oil. Okay? They do not they need not have a lot of a lot of volume of oil in them. And if you overfill over this line right here, what happens is when you're rolling down the road and this gets all warm and and you get build heat inside that hub, that oil gets warm and everything else it expands and when it expands what happens instead of blowing the seal out that's on the backside and blowing oil out there which it's going to do what they do is in these caps there's a little tiny pinhole right in the center and you can see there's 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 uh there's oil on here and stuff there's like a little mist you know a little fine oil i'm telling you right now that i believe just by looking at this that what's happening is he's overfilling this and when it builds up that little hole releases the pressure and a little fine mist of oil will will come come out of there 
when that happens, it's releasing out here. It's doing the job it's supposed to be doing. But these are overfilled. I mean, it's all the way up to the rubber. So that's what I would say is the problem. I don't see the gasket leaking there. I've already looked at the inside seal. That's not leaking. It could be that little rubber piece in there. That could be leaking. But being overfilled like that, you can't really tell. And I don't have those rubber plugs just to replace them. I could just replace the plug. But basically, the oil level just needs to be lower. This side over here is exactly the same. So I know he's topping these off. So that's what's going on. Um, the battery's here. We can do a test on it. But you can kind of see it. He said he smelled like a sulfur smell. You can see that it's been leaking. And you can see this battery right here is actually bulged. And it's, it's actually warm. These are cold. That one's even cold. This one right here is warm. And you can see acid up on the top of there. Um, but. <clears throat> so it's at 12.84. Wiggle clamps. Give me a second. All right, let's go back. It's in vehicle, top post, number of batteries is four. Regular flooded, co cranking amps, these are 730. Testing, testing, testing. Okay, so it's saying good pack. It's saying 1,821 cold cranking amps. Um, well, if you total them up, there's 3,000 cold, you know, more than that. There's 14, 1,460 times 2 is 28, 2920. So there's, what, 2920 cold cranking amps for, for all this, and it's saying that it has 1,820. So they are low. Um, I did this test this a little while ago, and it came back check pack. So we're going to check the pack, <clears throat> and the way to do that is to actually tear all these apart individually um, I actually wanted I did a lot of research in battery testers and stuff and and I actually called Midtronics and talked to them and that is the one that they recommended because you can actually test whoops you can actually test four batteries at one time where a lot of testers you cannot you have to individually tear this apart and that's kind of a pain in the butt because every time that you 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 uh, have a truck in here for a service or something like that, you can hook that up, do a test on it. Oh, they test out good. You know, you're good to go. But then when you have a situation where you have it come up, you know, that it's you know checking pack or you know it's on the verge or something, then it's uh, then you got to tear them apart and individually test them. Alrighty. Twelve point seven. Oop, I I need to go back. It's out of vehicle. Uh, Call cranking up seven hundred thirty. Okay, it's saying it's a good battery. Seven sixty seven. So it is a good battery. Okay, that one's a little lower, 12.12. Alright, that's only got nine cold cranking amps to replace battery.
700 cold cranking amps. It's saying replace batteries. So I have two batteries, this one here and this one here that are in 700 plus, you know, cold cranking amps. This one over here is at 560 and this one is at 9. So I'm going to look at what we have laying around here. We have a couple batteries. All right. We got our new batteries all installed. Got everything all cleaned up, cleaned everything with a wire brush. And uh, sprayed battery protectant all over everything. Coated all the connections nice. Just get the corrosion away. Corrosion is bad. I'm hoping it's just like a hose clamp or something leaking, but there is a couple of spots of coolant. So I gotta tear this whole thing apart. It's such a pain in the butt, you can see. <laughs> There's no room here. So, get tearing that apart. All right, guys, we are going to be taking this apart. I believe that the leak is coming from the wee pull. I have just gotten the nuts off of this here pulley. So, I'm just pulling this apart. Trying to, at least. There we go. Yep, that's what it is. It's the seal right here on the water pump. Yeah, she's shot. You can see here what's going on. There is a there's a weep hole that's on the bottom of the water pump that leaks if the seal is going out. And you can see right here on this pulley, this pulley sits on there like that. It covers up the, the weep holes like right here. So you can see all this white stuff. This is where the coolant was leaking out. Um, I told the boss here that this was going on, that this is what it was. He actually, I mean, this thing is not that old. I don't even think this thing is a year old. But he contacted um, um, Thermo King and they said that this is not a warranty issue. <laughs> I really can't believe that, to tell you the truth. I really can't believe that. There we go. There's your water pump. This is your uh, temperature sensor. It tells the temperature, it tells the computer what the temperature of the coolant is. And uh, it's got your gasket on there. It's just a, it's a, it just, it's kind of like a metal gasket. It has a little rubber on it. But this O-ring right here, this is the problem that I'm having with mine that leaks here. And um, this is your water, uh, your thermostat. This is your thermostat up on the top of here. And then you got your, your water pump, your pulleys right here. And you can't really see it. If I shine a light on it. You can see the chunks of rubber in there and stuff. That's what's leaking. But right there's that weep hole where it's coming out. And you can see it's all around there. Crack this valve. Yeah, I was worried about that. I gotta turn that. So. so it's like that. So we just open up this valve and it vents it. See, and then the antifreeze will come out here. kind of burps the system and lets the antifreeze come in and uh, fill up the engine block and everything else and when it gets up to this high then it 
it um, that way the engine doesn't have any bubbles in it air, air into it leaks or nothing. I'm going to clean that up underneath. I'm going to actually put the paper towel down so I can see if there's anything leaking, but it looks pretty good to me. You guys want to see what a, a truck driver's truck should look like? This guy is... Uh, I met this guy. This guy's a pretty cool guy. And um, he keeps his truck nice and organized. And I mean, he just he keeps it nice and organized, you know what I mean? That's nice. It's good to see, because some of these other trucks I've been in, I mean, they're just so packed full of junk, it's not even funny. This guy has everything all organized and everything, and it's not over. It's just nice. So, I'm to shut off the APU. Alright, let's take a look at these brakes. Got a wheel seal leaking. Probably his problem. It's got oil in there, and you can see it up inside there. She's wet up inside there, around there, around the hub, so she's leaking. So it's just you know, it's just like putting grease on there. It's just gonna slip. It's all gummy and stuff. Yep. And really, the only thing else I can try, I can check out, is to apply the brakes, go around. What in the world is this somebody backing in here about? And check for air leaks, see if there's any disc blown in the brake chambers. I have no idea what who's this is about. No, we got no air leaks, so 
I'm just gonna think that he, he's got oil inside that drum and he went to press on there and it just it's slipping and then probably his ABS is kicking on and off and everything else so uh, trying to get a hold of the boss and see if he has a possibility of getting a new wheel seal today all right 800 oh, I forgot to install the scale I'll pull it back in here cool leak got that thing curve APU engine code was erased brakes we found a leaking wheel seal put new batteries in it and the hub is a figment of his imagination we're good to go so I gotta pull it over for somebody special are you special did you Sometimes. ride did you ride the short bus to school Sometimes, but not today. Mm. You know, I had my truck greased uh, last week. Okay. That's exactly the kind of setup they used. I guess it's popular now, huh? Mm. Instead of having that line go. Yeah, well, you're kind of restricted with that. That you can go around more. You got a line that's draped everywhere. That only lasts for what, like 30 minutes or less? That? No. On a battery? Truck and trailer with that? What, and the amount of grease? Yeah. Usually I run out every time I crawl underneath the truck. It never fails. I do all the top stuff, I crawl underneath, I get a couple fittings, and then it runs out. I gotta crawl yeah. back out, put a new tube in. I usually go through about about a tube and a quarter, tube and a half on a oh, truck. Yeah. On a truck. truck. I went through five tubes yesterday. Wow. Yeah, I'm only supposed to be working on one truck this week. How much is a refill? A tube of grease? Yeah. I don't know, a couple bucks. Grease is cheap, parts are not. That's why I've been explaining to the boss. Because all the trailers, all the problems with all the trailers, it's because nobody's been greasing them. Yeah. Yeah, so I've been going through and rebuilding all these trailers, and I just kind of, I sent them a text message. I said, I just want to give you a great insight in life. Grease is cheap, parts are not. All right, I'm out of here. See ya.